This guy was compared to Randy Moss. He's one of the best athletes in his draft class and was one of the most prolific receivers in Tennessee football history. He was selected very highly in the NFL and was expected to be a future franchise receiver and at minimum a star receiver. Unfortunately, none of this ever really happened as he was a bust in the NFL and most people have forgotten of his existence. In today's video, we're gonna talk about who this guy is, go through his entire story, his time at Tennessee, and why he ultimately did not work out in the NFL. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Tennessee receiver, Justin Hunter. But in order to understand what went wrong for Justin Hunter, we first need to go back in time. Growing up, Justin Hunter had always been faster than the kids he grew up with as he was born in the town of Virginia Beach. He was told he had God-given athleticism and he put that into the game of football. His passion for the sport stemmed from his childhood as he admired Randy Moss. Little did some people know, he would actually be compared to that guy. He said, quote, I looked at him since I started playing football. He always went deep. People called me Lil Randy and I even had the braids like Moss did. Hunter's sports passion was not just football as he also played basketball and ran track at a very high level. He did eventually put more time into football, but he was also a nationally ranked high jumper and was also a basketball star. So like all big time athletes, he would have a decision to make. A bunch of colleges came knocking on Hunter's door and they asked him to decide between football and basketball. He eventually chose football because of the professional level. He said there were a lot more slots in the NFL draft than the NBA draft, so he decided he was going to choose the pigskin, but he also still wanted to run track in college. He gave up basketball, so now how would he do on the football field? Well, there was one time his junior year where he knew he made the right choice. He said, quote, it was on a 46 yard touchdown catch. It was a go route and I just ran right past this guy for 46 yards. That game, all we did was throw the deep ball and I had like six catches for 172 yards and three touchdowns. I knew no one could stop me after that. In 2008, while at Ocean Lakes High School, Hunter showed signs of greatness on the football field as he caught 34 passes for 558 yards and nine scores. He helped lead the Dolphins to the Eastern Regional Final and combining that with his athleticism, he was going to blow up on the recruiting scene. He had now become a top 150 national recruit, but where was he going to go? Well, he headed down to Baton Rouge as he chose the LSU Tigers. The 6'4 receiver had chosen them over Bama, Ohio State, Florida, and Penn State. It was because of their head coach, Les Miles, as he was going to let him run track and play football. Plus, the Tigers were in a great spot as a program, and they could help him achieve his NFL dreams. But this would not last forever. He was rumored to decommit, and that is exactly what he did. It looked like it was going to come down to Virginia and Tennessee for his talents. He visited Knoxville and fell in love with the campus right away, and also add in the fact that he bonded with their new head coach, Derek Dooley, it was a ball and glove fit and was the worst kept secret in college football recruiting that he was going to go there. He eventually chose the volunteers saying, quote, UT is a big track school as well as football. I had a good conversation with both coaches and they agreed to let me run track as well as play football as a true freshman. He became one of the first big pieces of the Derek Dooley era and scouts saw a ton of potential in him. One even said, quote, Hunter stands at six foot four and is listed as having a 4.440 time. At about 185 pounds, he'll need to bulk up and work on his strength to be able to deal with press and man coverage, but his speed and his soft touch will make him a dangerous threat in the passing game. He was a big deal and was going to contribute right away and 24 seven sports agreed. He was ranked as a four star recruit, the number five wide receiver and the 33rd best player in the class of 2010. He had height, but how would he do in Rocky Top? In 2010, the Tennessee Volunteers were under first year head coach Derek their quarterback was Tyler Bray, their star running back was Torin Poole, and the top receiver was Denarius Moore. While Moore was the top wideout, Hunter still had a pretty good freshman year. He ended up catching 16 passes for 415 yards and 7 touchdowns. This was pretty dang good for a true freshman, and he'd break records as both a freshman in football and in track. But then, he would tear his ACL. This would happen midway through his sophomore year, and to that point, he'd only caught 17 passes for 314 yards and two touchdowns. This was extremely unfortunate as he was getting off to a blazing start. In their first game against Montana, he caught six passes for 146 yards and a touchdown. Then against Cincinnati, he caught 10 passes for 156 yards and a score as well. At the time of his injury, he was leading the SEC in both receptions and receiving yards per game. This would also lead to a crossroads in his life as he would now have to quit track. He said, quote, I didn't think I was going to be able to jump the same. I had an eight month recovery timeline and it didn't feel the same jumping on it. 
and I came back to track, I'd have to change up everything technique-wise. So yeah, he was now back in 2012 with very high expectations. He joined another star teammate in Cordell Patterson, and both him and Hunter would take off. Rajon Neal and Marlon Lane were the two running backs, and Tyler Bray was once again the quarterback. Hunter would catch nine passes for 73 yards in their opening win against NC State, and then had eight catches for 146 yards and three touchdowns against Georgia State. They'd lose to Florida in week three before he'd once again go over the century mark in a win over Akron. From there, he hit a little bit of a slump, but he would bounce back in a big way against Troy. In that game, he caught nine passes for 181 yards and three touchdowns, and then in an overtime loss to Missouri, he caught nine more passes for 141 yards and one score. Tennessee would end up going five and seven as they lost to Kentucky in their final game. In that matchup, he caught three passes for 65 yards and a touchdown, and that would be the final game of his Tennessee career. He finished his junior campaign with 73 receptions for 1,083 yards and nine scores. Because of that, he was named a second team All-SEC selection and was now going to put his name into the NFL draft pool. Going into the 2013 draft, he was graded as a first round talent, but he'd end up slipping a little bit as some worried about drops and his motor. On draft night, a few linemen also slipped into the first round, so it would push Hunter into day two. His teammate Cordero Patterson ended up going in the first round. Hunter would not have to wait long on night two though, as the Tennessee Titans would trade up and took him with the second overall pick in the second round. He joined a wide receiver room that included Kenny Britt, Kendall Wright, and Nate Washington, making it a pretty loaded and talented group. Led by quarterback Jake Locker, Hunter finished his rookie campaign with 18 catches for 354 yards and 4 touchdowns as the Titans finished with a 7-9 record and their coach was fired. This meant he'd have a new staff to adjust to, and now he had high expectations going into his second year. His first year wasn't great, but many saw great things coming from him in 2014, but it was eh. He was the third ranked wideout on the team, and his season would end early as he lacerated his spleen in late November, causing him to miss the rest of the year. He wasn't that great up to that point though, as he only finished with 28 catches for 498 yards and 3 touchdowns. Add in the fact that he started 8 games, and you're starting to put the pieces together that he wasn't living up to the hype. It also didn't help that the Titans went 2-14 and that year and were terrible. In 2015, he was starting to get beat out by journeyman players, and his production wasn't great either. He only caught 22 passes for 264 yards and a touchdown before he'd once again go down with an injury. He suffered an ankle injury against the Panthers, and on November 16th, he was put on IR. He would return in 2016, and was supposed to be the third option at wide receiver, but he ended up getting waived. This was definitely very tough for him, as he would now move over to the Buffalo Bills, we only caught 10 passes for 189 yards and 4 scores. After that, he moved on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, where in two years there, he caught 7 catches for 1 touchdown. By 2018, he was done. For the most part, he was considered a bust on the field, but his name also was in the news back in 2015 for stuff off the field. Apparently, while he was back in Virginia Beach, he got into a bar fight. He ended up turning himself into the police, and he was charged with sucker punching someone. After the court case though, it was found that he was not guilty of that, and returned to playing football. I can't really figure out what he is doing now, but I do know he is married, and seemingly has moved on from the game of football. Many people will consider him a bust, and honestly he didn't live up to the hype in the NFL. So I have three reasons why he was a bust. One, bad quarterback play. Every team he was on didn't really have a good quarterback, and in his most important years in Tennessee, there just wasn't a great arm throwing him the ball, so that did not help. Two, he had limited ability. He was seemingly one of those athletic freaks that relied on his physical traits, and because of the way he was physically built, he was not someone who could do jet sweeps or was not very usable in the offense, so when teams figured out how to guard him, he didn't really have a whole lot to add to the table, plus there were concerns about his motor and how motivated he was to get better. Finally, it was injury. Some would say he lost some of his explosiveness after his ACL tear at Tennessee, but he also battled multiple injuries while he was in the NFL, and combining that with the bad quarterback play and the questionable motor, he may have honestly just given up and stopped caring. There were definitely a multitude of factors, but unfortunately, Justin Hunter has been labeled as a bust in the NFL, and many don't even remember him. What do you guys think though? If you're a Tennessee Vols or a Tennessee Titans fan, what went wrong for Justin Hunter in the NFL? Who is another player who was drafted high and had a lot of potential that busted? And what's another topic I could take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below, smash that like button if you're going to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.